I just want to give you a little vitamin pill and strength. Everybody talked about the Maragdam so much, and, and I'm sure it sunk into you. Anybody who comes back from Israel and tells anything bad about Israel, tells them, my dear brother, the spies destroyed Israel. And they didn't lie, it's true. Someone comes back and says, you know, right now, don't go this summer to Israel, they're throwing stones and the Arabs and makes you crazy. I say, brother, I read Pastor Shalach Lecho and Bok Shem, I have tzitzis on and I'm not afraid of anybody. You know, there's a story, one of the pupils of the Holy Bal Shem was walking on the street, with long tzitzis, and suddenly a high officer, a Cossack, comes and he says, oh, what's hanging down on your side? He says, the Cossack, what's hanging down on your side? He says, my sword. He says, this is my sword. He says, would you like to duel with me? He says, any time. Hold it. <laughs> so the Cossack comes, you know, with a sword. And the atonement of the Balshem, you know, Mamshi's tzitzis were for real. He swings his tzitzis, <laughs> and they touch the sword, and it broke into pieces, right? Okay, now I just want to tell you one more thing. <laughs> Who's this? Yeah. I said to somebody last night, you know, there's a little Shabbos and Yom Shekula Shabbos. A little Shabbos is, I have Shabbos, I have chicken soup, the Jewish press, I sit with my wife, little Shabbos. Big Shabbos is, I invite the whole world. Little tzitzis, they're hanging on my garment, and I can hold on to my tzitzis when I'm in trouble. Big tzitzis says that my tzitzis are big enough for the whole world to hang on. The whole world. And I want you to know, I'm begging you, friends, all of you, wear long tzitzis. Because so many people have nothing to hold on to. And here I'm coming to the point. You know what people thought? The Maragdim thought Erzis Hall is a good land to live with, live in. So they came back, it's not so good to live in. But they completely forgot, Erzis Hall is not only a land to live in, it's got something to hold on to. Gewalt, we are in exile for 2,000 years. You know where we were holding on to? To every, every little piece in Erzis Hall. Every inch of soil, every, every stone of the holy wall. You know, I can sit here in New York and Gewalt, I'm holding on to the holy wall. Right? So what God was telling the Eden, the teure Eitz Chaim and Machziken, but the teure is not a teure of learning, it's a different teure, right? Psychology is good to learn, science is good to learn. Hold on to. And I want you to know this is not such a self fabricated teure, it's not a matter Mother says, God gave us sits, it's like somebody is drowning, you're holding on with your last strength. One more thing, you know, it's time for the so-called Balet Shuva, he the term Balet Shuva, but whatever you call, we call ourselves. It's time to lift up our heads. There was a time, you know what someone told me in, in Israel last week, I think it's all of them here. He said, what's about Shuva? He says, as a nechtige balavere and a heintige amort, you know. That means yesterday he sinned and today he doesn't know anything. <laughs> What's about Shuvah, right? Yesterday he did wrong and today he doesn't know anything. That's chutzpah, right? I want you to know, friends, the time has come for the world to know not only the Bala Shuvah know a lot, even more than the so-called Siddiquim. I want you to know, you know what Bialik says, I hope someday we'll have our own thieves, our own underground, right? We have our own rabbis. The Shiva woman is sweeping the world. We have our own. We have our own yeshivas. They're not so good yet. But we're getting there. And friends, please don't ever think you're a beginner. None of us are beginners. We're far advanced. I want you to know that most people here put everyone to shame. You know, I'm coming into Borough Park and there's a very sweet holy ladies. There's a thousand dollar shaitl. But where's their head? Under the shaitl. And maybe a lot of us don't wear shade like all the holy women, but Gaval, the head is in the right place. The heart is in the right place. So please, Mamish, keep your heads high. It says, Vayik Baliba Badaki Hashem, Mamish, keep your heads high. One more thing. I'm sure you know it anyway, but just I want to bless you and me with it. Moshe Rabbeinu says to Yeshua, Ko Yeshia Cho Matzas Maraglim. God should give you strength not to listen to the Maraglim. Now listen to this. Who were the Maraglim? The Maraglim were the biggest rabbis of the world. 
ten big rabbis. Just imagine yourself, a little schmendrick like you and I, they're going on a mission, and there are ten big rabbis, right? Okay, Kolev was, uh, forget about Kolev, we'll come to Kolev in a second. Ten big rabbis. And Yeshua was Mamish, a pupil of Moshe Rabbeinus, he's the most humble person in the world, right? All the rabbis sit there and they say, listen, I want you to know, they tell each other, it's a bad scene to go to Israel, forget it, Eretz HaChel is Yeshua, don't go there. Do you know, according to the Torah, the majority decides. The Torah, you ask a Yid, Torah, right? I want you to know something very deep. God's name has four letters, Yud K Vov K. You know what he gave him, Yud? You know, Yud K Vov K means the way God's name is garmenting itself until it comes down, and I can understand it in my head. Like, imagine Einstein wants to explain to me his theory. He has to put all kinds of garments on his theory until I get a little glimpse. Sometimes God talks to us via the four letters. Moshe Rabbeinu gave Yeshua the letter Yud. Mamish God's light, no garments, just straight God's light. And when that light hits you, don't listen to anybody. I want you to know, friends, thousands of Jews would have stayed alive if they would have not listened to a lot of rabbis. I know he in his book. He lived somewhere, had a wife and 12 children. 1937, he asked a rabbi, should I go to Israel? He says, God forbid, Israel is not from. He would have had his wife and his 12 children. Do you know why Yeshua is the one to conquer Israel? Because Moshe Rabbeinu gave him strength not to listen to anybody. Have enough guts. If the Rabbi Shem shines something into me, that's it. I want you to know there is prophecy. Eretz Yisrael is deeper than prophecy. Prophecy means I know what's happening yesterday, what will happen tomorrow. I know which Gilgal I am in. It's all cute. This is what I need to know. The greatest light of Eretz Yisrael is I have enough guts to listen to the deepest depths of my heart. The deepest, deepest depths of my heart. And friends, I bless you and me. If you and I want to conquer Israel, want to make our way to the Holy Land, Make our way into Yiddishkeit. Let's have the guts not to listen to anybody. I want you to know something else. The saddest thing in the world is, I want you to know everybody when they get married, they build their Eretz Yisrael. The Chuppe is there in Yerushalayim. I want you to know, you know, the walking to the Chuppe is like Avraham Avinu is walking in Eretz Yisrael. The standing under the Chuppe is like Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim, it says, I'm the The standing. I bless you, friends, whenever you find your soulmate. Please, don't ask anybody. Conquer your Eretz Yisrael. Call your Shechom and says, Just listen to the inside of the inside. Listen to the great rabbis, the Maraglim. You know what they said? They felt like cockroaches and, and Mamish a giant, right? I thought you're the greatest rabbi in the world. You afraid? Yeah, tell you the truth. Shake off tight, this is my rabbi. I don't want a rebel who is afraid. I don't want a rebel who is afraid of anything in the world. I need a rebel who is not afraid. And you know something? In exile, it's a cute rebel. He is afraid of this one, afraid of this one. In exile, you can make it. You can even make it to receive manna from heaven. Erz is wrong? No. Friends, I bless you to have guts. Inside, 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 inside. When you find your soulmate, just do it. Suddenly God says to you, Mamish, Moshe Lechan, and start learning. Imagine all the holy women here would have called up all the big rabbis. Am I permitted to learn? Should I learn? Imagine Yehudis would have called up the rabbis. Should I learn Mehashiloya? Should I learn Biala? And you know something? If Yehudit would have called up the Biala rabbi himself, his grandson in Geneva, he would tell her, a woman is not permitted to learn my grandfather's Torahs. He was chas v'sholem. He says, a woman? Do you know how to make chant? Heartbreaking, right? Does Yehudis need a rabbi like this? She needs a rabbi like Yeshua. All of us. Friends, I tell you something. If you would have asked all the rabbis, should we make a little, like Ruachel here, like a little get together, they would have asked, how big is the mechitze? Chas v'sholem and the women don't sit together. Do they see each other? Is the mechitze long enough? Where do you get the meat? And who is Kedalje, who is Nomi, who is Meir, who is Mechol. 
forget me, I'm Treif anyway. And they would say, Chas for Shon, and we're not permitted to do it. And the meantime, Baruch Shem, Gedali has the privilege of bringing together hundreds, thousands of people. Okay, friends, good Shabbos, good Yom Tif. And I bless you to make it as well this summer. Don't ask questions, just go. Good Shabbos, good Yom Tif. Thank you. Uh, yeah.